Watch out when those Facebook ads suddenly offer you everything you've ever wanted, like hot tattooed guys in linen pants. Online clothes shopping can be a nightmare, especially when the stuff comes from some company in China you've never heard of. Caveat emptor! Subdivision life has gotten even weirder in the age of COVID. Have you seen birthday parades yet? Not that it wasn't gross before, because the suburbs are full of trash. And this week in Woo, the QAnon freaks have thoughts on Lincoln Park, and one of them let Pitney know all about it. And while I've got your attention, Invasion of the Remake just celebrated their fifth anniversary. Check out their promo later in this episode. And as always, links to promoted shows are in the show notes. Welcome to Pitney and Amelia's Bitchin' Boutique! We may be awful, but, but we're, we're right! Google does, where no matter what you search for, then all of a sudden you get ads on Facebook. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, so like, you know, when I was shopping for a car, all of a sudden, because I was searching Subarus and Hondas on (laughs) Google, I had all these Subaru and Honda ads on my Facebook. Oh shit. Did I ever tell you about the time I was chatting through Skype on my work computer? Because we use Skype for, like, inter-office chatting and, and email meetings and stuff. Uh-huh. I was talking through Skype with a co-worker about a certain kind of salsa that he likes. I used the work computer, which has nothing to do with my home computer or my phone. I used the work computer to Google that salsa to see if it was available here. Well, two hours after I got off of work that day... I'm on my phone, and I open Facebook through the app on my phone. First thing I see is an ad for that fucking salsa. Oh, see, that is so frightening. I like it, don't it's, understand. And I wasn't even talking out loud. Like, I have long suspected that my phone listens to me when I talk out loud. Like, it's hearing me say the word salsa right now, and it's going to tell me something about salsa later. But I was typing on a computer unrelated to my phone. Oh and my somehow it god, did. see, it's Terrifying. really scary. And, you know, maybe Trisha is right. There's a little bit of Big Brother going on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're going to be bored and confused All right. if they're looking at me. Because, you know, sometimes, sometimes I can just go down a wormhole and spend a whole afternoon Googling different kinds of pocket pussy for no reason at all because I think it's funny. Oh, right, right. <laughs> you know I love that shit. You know, but God damn it. So, you know, there was this vendor that I used to buy stuff every year at Kerrville. Mm-hmm. You know, all those weird hippie pants and stuff that I have and oh, yeah. my like little Harry hippie pants purse. And, and I buy stuff from them every year. Last year, they were not there. Mm. So I had done a search trying to find them. Oh, to see if they had a website. Yeah. And I wasn't able to find them, but I was able to find, like, I say legitimate companies with similar merchandise, right? Right, right. And after that, all of a sudden, my Facebook, all these ads for all these clothing companies. And they have, there's like a whole bunch of different companies that have all these ads that have all the same pictures. And it's like these really hot, tattooed, hippie guys in these really, really cool hippie pants, shirts. You know, they're all linen and baggy and cool and stuff that I would wear at Kerrville, right? Right. I am convinced that these companies are somewhere out there. Those clothes do exist. Oh, I'm sure they do, because people wear them. Yeah, Yeah. and I'm sure that these companies have stolen those pictures 
to advertise <laughs> because I have ordered two pairs of pants from those companies. One was black linen, real baggy, drawstring, hippie pants with big pockets. You know, the kind of shit that I would wear at Kerrville, right? Like the, like the Thai fisherman pant kind of things? Or not quite that bad? Not quite that. Not quite okay. that baggy, but pretty, you know. I love those. Yeah. And so I ordered these pants. Three months later, I get like this weird, I want to say almost stiff canvas fabric <gasps> with a white G-string mini shorts that look like a 12-year-old boy's P.E. shorts from China. What the that fuck? That are so small for me, I can't even get them over my waist. Oh, my God. Because I ordered, like, these black linen pants, and I got these weird gym shorts from China. So, not even remotely close. And for, like, $45. Holy fuck. So, it wasn't even... They were black. Oh, no. That's the only... And because it took three months, and they, oh, it was yeah. from China, I'm not going to mess with it to oh, try God. to return those. Yeah, I mean, what's I the point? Have... Shit. Did I ever tell you... Remember when my brother-in-law got married, my husband's little brother, I wanted to wear something, you know, super cute to their wedding, and I saw this really cute kind of retro-looking kind of... 50s cocktail dress with like the big skirt a little bit of a crinoline under it i just super super cute and like a beautiful royal blue you know did all the measurement thing ordered it and not only did it take i mean i i don't think i got it five days before the wedding holy fuck yeah um not even remotely was was never gonna fit me like it when you, if you don't look too closely at it, it might be that dress, but no way in hell. And, um, I ended up just wearing, I mean, granted the dress that I wore was cute, but it was like a brown dress with white polka dots that was originally a Lane Bryant dress, but I bought it in a thrift store for like $4, you know, oh, but hey, for fuck's there you sake. Go. You know, I, I spent some pretty good money on what I thought was going to be like a beautiful cocktail dress. And although I ultimately when I got to the wedding, because I didn't know what the bridesmaids dresses were going to look like. In some ways, it's actually a good thing that I didn't wear that because it would have looked like I was trying to pull some shit and pretend I was a bridesmaid. Because I swear to God, her bridesmaids dress were almost oh. that exact dress. <laughs> I would have looked like such oh, a freak. Oh, wow. So like, what the good. fuck are you doing? It would be like if I showed up at a wedding wearing a, a white bridal gown. It was just really obnoxious. But, of course, their dresses oh, were cute. Oh, God. Their dresses were adorable. But, oh, my God, that piece of shit. Yeah. It's still in my closet. You I'm going to have to, like, I know. give it to someone who can tailor it or, to, you know, turn it into something good so they can have it. They can have it for free. It's just chalk it up to experience. Oh, I know. But then... Because I'm naive, it happened again. Not the same company, though. Different Good. company, okay. similar pictures, really hot, hot tattoo, tattoo hippie guys. guy, outside in the woods, blah, 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 oh blah. My God. I think you've probably sent wearing, me these pictures. Okay, this was to be like a linen, sort of like, not khaki, but in between khaki and brown. Like just tan. Baggy, kind of capri length pants. Like cargo big shorts? pockets on the side. Yeah. Okay. But they were like capri length. They were really, really cool. Like hippie clothes to wear to festivals, right? Different companies. So I was like, oh, those are cute. I'm going to order those. Right. Again, months and months later. And I'm going to hold these up. This is what I get. Okay, well, uh, it's... Can you see, can you see <gasps> the beige grow grain ribbon? Okay, okay, I have to explain. And look at, look at, look at the grow grain ribbon on the Oh pockets. my god, that's the word, oh, god and damn it. And look at the back, look at the back with the grow grain ribbon. Okay, let me see if I, okay, so they're medium brown, sort of shit brown, I would say. Yeah. And then like a light tan 
ribbon trim around the legs, across the pockets, all the, oh, around the waist. That is yeah. fucking hideous. And these, have, and the fabric is weird, and it's like 100% polyester. So you can't dye it? Fabric. You can't dye it. And they're supposed to be cotton. And, you know, you put them on, and they're these capri-length weird things that look like a junior high sewing project. I was going to say, it looks like it would have a little matching bolero-length jacket, and you would be a waiter in a themed restaurant somewhere. Oh, they're so gross. Like and the only thing that shoes. I can think of is maybe to get, like, maybe a red or an orange, like, satin ribbon and doing like a decorative stitch over the grow game to make them maybe wearable for a festival well you know but again like 40 bucks which if they were what the picture was it would have been great right and so you spent 40 bucks and now you have a project and look at they're hideous that is not attractive <laughs> It's like if the trim was closer in color to the shorts. I mean, that is a sharp contrast. That is that is a seriously sharp contrast. That's really And it's bad. not even remotely like the picture. God. It's totally not like the picture. And they and they definitely suck you in with the pictures of the hot shirtless tattooed guys. They know exactly. Yeah, and again, those clothes have to exist from some independent company somewhere. Right. Shit. And I'm convinced these companies have stolen those pictures. Sure, because those aren't their models. No. Well, at least because the, the that fucking dress that I had, at at least the woman in the picture, granted, she was tiny, but that wasn't the problem because they had the dress in all different sizes and measurements. But she was Chinese. At least, yeah. at least the picture came, was also a Chinese woman, probably in China. Oh God! Um, you know how Halloween, because I do my yard up as a um, cemetery, um, I tend to dress kind of somewhat Victorian Undertaker, more or less. Yeah. Well, I found what looked like a kind of stylized version of like a tailcoat, kind of like a semi-Victorian tailcoat, not quite as fitted, not, you know, a little, like, schlubbier fabric, you know, softer, so it's more comfortable, but something like that. And it was, like, it wasn't super expensive, but it was in all kinds of sizes, and I was like, yeah, sure, you know, because even if it's not perfect, it's it's black, it's in the dark, it's for a costume, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Oh, not even fine. Not even, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't even remember, like, when I put it on, I just remember standing in front of a mirror and being like, I don't know what button goes with what buttonhole, I don't know, are the, is this supposed to be the collar? Like, I mean, it was almost like random pieces of fabric attached in random ways. Like, are there oh, sleeves? No. I think there's sleeves. <laughs> It was terrible. It's hanging in there. Someday when I'm less pissed off, when I'm in a better mood, and I can put it on and try and figure out something. Like what the fuck it is. Yeah. yeah. Because it's something. And it's it's vaguely reminiscent. Like when it hangs on the hanger, you can kind of see a vague shape that would look yeah. like that. But obviously, well, how does it look on? It's one of those things, you know, they, they hang on a hanger. It looks totally different than on. But then on is like, what the fuck? What are all these layers and flaps? And why are there oh, flaps? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, I never learned. I know. I learned. And I will say to you, there's a, so there's a, there's a company called Passion State mm -hmm. that I think is based out of Britain. Okay. And they actually have clothes that look really cool, right? Yeah. So I bought some shorts from them. And again, they were like $40. I thought I was getting high quality. Or at least medium heavy, quality. <laughs> like heavy cotton shorts, right? right? So I get these shorts. And they actually do look exactly like the picture. They're cute. I wear them all the time. They're actually cute. I really like them. 
but they are like they should have been fifteen dollars because of the fabric. Because they are that new fabric that's a hundred percent polyester that's real soft that feels like cotton. Oh. But they're so like cheaply made. Like microfiber, kind of. Something. It's really an interesting fabric, yeah. But it's real soft and nice, and it seems like cotton. And they look. They're cute. They get. They make my butt look good. Always a plus. I like them, but they're so cheaply made. The pockets are so small, and you can't even put your wallet in them. Oh God, that's unusual for men's because women's always. Have and tiny they pockets. are made out of cheap acetate lining fabric that after the first wash all the stitching in the pockets disappears and the pockets are open and no. so cheaply made that the facing <laughs> of the pockets totally come up so if you look at the shorts when they're on from the side you see this black acetate bunching out oh, no. because the facing is so short yeah so oh, no. So beware of clothing ads on Facebook because oh, they're not what you think. Well, you know, do you ever, do you get the Wish ads on Facebook? I have, yeah. I, I still don't know what Wish is. I think it must be an app. It must be something that you have to have the app in order to buy. Because I've clicked on things and nothing, I can't get anything to come up. But, you know, like Wish will be... Oh, here, here's here's some mixing bowls. Here's a spatula. Here's a rubber gimp mask. It's always like normal thing, normal thing, weird sex toy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Random I've looked at their web, yeah. Stuffed animal. And you know it's all this, like, cheap-ass shit from China or Taiwan it's or, you know. It's fascinating. It's so fa- And it's always, I mean, it, the combination of things that they suggest to you now, granted, like I said, you know, I'll I'll go on a, a thing where I'm just looking up weird sex toys or whatever because I find them incredibly amusing, like zombie dildos or oh, you know yes. shit like that, like horror themed dildos or or animal dick dildos, like we like we looked yeah. up one time um, for those people. And you know they have they have an alien fleshlight. Really. Yes. That hot alien pussy? Oh, yes. They have an alien fleshlight. I, I had no idea. Oh, my God. But, like, you know, perfectly ordinary people, though, who don't spend afternoons looking up shit like that will get wish trying to sell them crazy gimp masks and shit. And it's always yeah. like, oh, wish, who hurt you? It's like, what, what are you, why are you trying to get attention, you poor thing? But it's just like, oh, my God. So anyway, and the thing, and the frustrating, it must be frustrating for these people that actually are trying to sell the actual clothing that's in the pictures. Right, true. And I don't know, did they steal those pictures? Or is it all like some big organized scam where they take pictures, they'll make something that looks cool, and they'll have attractive models, so you think you're ordering that, but it's all a scam? That's possible. But what's weird is that somebody is making pants. Maybe it's a new mafia thing. It could be a new mafia thing. Somebody's out there making pants. You can make decent pants as easily as you can make shitty pants yeah and i personally could make any of that stuff myself for myself but why would i want to do that when i can click a button and spend forty dollars and have it delivered to me right (laughs) and get the added the added thrill of ooh, if i wear these shorts will i look like that because yeah know, yeah will i instantly no. become that guy <laughs> yeah because yeah that's the that's the dream right or yeah. does that what will it arrive on him and i have to remove <laughs> the shorts from him because that's that i'll pay extra for that <laughs> yeah because i mean that's the dream I mean, but you know that's customer service right there you know but with all with all things no, the fantasy is better than the reality. Happy on him, Tori. The Bitchin' Boutique. Yes. 
Um, I think we need to give them a thing, Spike. We can give them a drop that they can play on their shows. Yes, show. I think we've uh, got to find some time and get get time to do, do that. I think we should do it right now. I think we should do it right now. Look, I'll show you how easy it is, Spike. <laughs> Watch this. I'm just going to do it live. Okay, do it live. Like that bloke screams. I'm just going to do it live. Watch this. Hi, this is Dr. Dan from the Two Skeptical... Sh- I can't do it now. <laughs> Look, I can't speak. Too much pressure. I'll try again. I'll try again. I'll try again. Take 52. Hi, this is Dr. Dan from the Two Skeptical Chaps podcast, and you are listening to the most bitchin' boutique. See? That was easy, wasn't it? Okay. They could send us one, we could play it in ass. There yeah, you yeah. Right, you do it. Yeah. Right, what do you want me to say? Whatever, whatever comes to mind. Hi, this is Spike from the Two Skeptical Chaps podcast, who ain't no bitch, but you're listening to the Bitchin' Boutique. Oh, that was good. I think I hope they use that. Let's see if they cut it and put it in the next show. <laughs> Diplomatic community. <laughs> Oh my god, so there's this thing, and it might it might be happening out there too. This was sent to me by a listener slash friend. Um, this was on a like a Facebook group that she's in. Uh people who live in like a certain subdivision. It's like that kind of a group. Hey neighbors! My daughter turns eight tomorrow. So we are doing the new normal birthday parade for her. We're hoping some of you can drive by and wish blank a happy birthday. Banners slash decorations are encouraged, but deaf not required. She would just love to see the neighborhood show her love. And then address, time period. Granted, the time is only a 30-minute span. Thank fucking God. Yeah, yeah. Thank God, yes. There's a big pop-up sign in the front yard so you can't miss it. And all I can think is who the fuck would do... One, who the fuck would do that? Like, oh, I don't know this kid, but I'll go drive past her house because it's her birthday? How bored am I if I'm... Oh, she's eight. I should drive my Kia. Next oh, to, God. Past and it's the whole thing of parents thinking their children is so goddamn special and they're not. Oh, my God. <laughs> and you know, the first thing I thought when she sent that to me, now, granted, this is going to come off as like, oh, me and my terrible childhood. I had one birthday party in my childhood. One. Birthday parties for little kids are already over the top. But making your random neighbors, like, how about send invitations out to her little friends and have their parents drive her little friends past her house? So at least she knows the kid waving at her from the park. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, that makes a, a tiny, tiny bit of sense. Tiny. Well, yeah, like, if, you know, like, your best friend in school. Right. That you can't see each other. Yeah, I get that makes sense. Yeah. Because, you know, they can they can drive by and hurl a present at you or something. So you can say hi to your kid from a safe distance. But random neighbors driving by, like I I hope no one did. I really Oh, and I hope and I hope the mother is all bent out of shape and butt hurt because nobody came because it's stupid and she thinks her fucking child is special. And then the next, <laughs> and then that was six thirty to seven at seven o one p.m. She gets on Facebook. Well, because nobody drove by their stupid house. See if I ever bring donuts to the community pool again. <laughs> I swear to God, like, now, granted, I don't know if anyone is doing that in our neighborhood because I had to get out of the Homeowners Association Facebook group because apparently I'm a Nazi, um, according to some of these people. Because, well, one, you guys are shooting off way too goddamn many fireworks, and two, I think it's really distasteful for people to be Gladys Kravitzing out their windows and reporting on Facebook every time they see a teenager walk by. And occasionally shooting pictures of Oh, I know. Like, I was on that... I was on the Nextdoor app in San Antonio. Yeah, Nextdoor does that a lot, too. And it would always be like... Oh my god, be on the lookout. There was a guy wearing a backpack walking down the street. Uh And I don't recognize him. Right. Exactly. My favorite, I, phrase, okay. my favorite phrase from the Facebook group, though, was 
you know, it's always like two or three junior high or high school age boys, obviously up to no good. It's like, why? Oh, because they're please. brown? Like, like why? Because the they were walking you? down the street while not white? Exactly. What's weird, though... Is that though, what it boils down to? What's weird, though, is that this neighborhood... I mean, part of the reason why I live here is because this ain't a white neighborhood. Oh, you know? God, no, your neighborhood is not. My no. neighborhood might be half white, maybe, you know? But it's, but it's like, those are your fucking neighbors. I mean, there was some people walking by. They basically, the way they described, the people walked right pa- past my house, basically. Because it was this person on this corner over here, and she was talking about how, I bet they were walking, you know, to the convenience store. And it's like, yeah, they probably were. So the fuck what? You know? Now, granted, now that... Oh, the thing about convenience stores, though, because, oh. okay, I have a Seven Eleven up the street from my house, right? And I want to say it was put in 10 years ago. Sure. Mom was telling me there was an outrage and the neighborhood got together to try to ban the 7-Eleven being put in because they didn't want a 7-Eleven in the neighborhood because of the people it might attract. At a 7-Eleven? Because it's a convenience store, and they don't want that in the neighborhood. Never mind that a block away, there is, like, the ghettoest bar in San Jose that's been there for 50 years. And this total fucking ghetto-ass liquor store. Never mind that. But the but the but they didn't want that Seven Eleven there because of the people. And you know you know all these fuckers in my neighborhood shop at that Seven Eleven because I sure do. Oh my god, who doesn't <laughs> want a Seven Eleven? I I mean, yeah. God, I love I. Well, I mean, granted, we have this convenience store, which this convenience store is is nice because they actually have a small produce department and a frozen food section. Uh, you know, like if you want frozen burritos or tripe or something, they they can hook you up because you know we're on the east side. <laughs> you know, it's like I can get I have multiple options if I want tripe. Uh, they got you can buy pizzas at mine, and oh yeah, I like my Seven <laughs> Eleven. Granted, okay, so the Seven Eleven is. The bottom floor of a complex that is quote unquote low income apartments, which are oh, they're, the seven they're beautiful part of it? apartments. Yeah, oh, that's kind of cool. And so the bottom level is a beauty salon, a nail salon, the Seven Eleven, and a parking garage. Right. I, see, I love that kind of setup. Yeah. So you drive into the parking garage at night to go into the Seven Eleven, and there's always these guys. So oh, you want some weed? So, what can I help you with? What are you looking to buy? Oh, my God. It's totally the drug dealer haven. I love that, though. And there's hookers. Well, of course. See, but, we don't have that what? here. That's, I mean... That stuff was there along First Street before the 7-Eleven, and exactly. that's nothing to do with the 7-Eleven. I mean, it's called First Street in San Jose. That's where the drug dealers and the prostitutes and are. And I think it's fabulous, because you know what? I mean, I'm sure they're not nice people if you fuck with them, but they're perfectly nice to me if I go at 11 o'clock at night with my painted nails right. to buy cigarettes. They're like... Oh, hey, you want to buy some weed? No, thanks. Oh, okay, have a good night. Have a good night. You know, you know. They don't know that you're never going to buy weed from them because you don't like it, but they but they don't know that. You know, you might, yeah, you might be having a party. Yeah, and they're perfectly nice. You know, oh you know and I do, and I have seen on several occasions, you know, the cops there, because they always do, like, the token drug bust. Oh, sure. Uh, you know, but that's <laughs> always been, and it has nothing to do with the Seven Eleven. but I thought that was funny oh, when you said that. Yeah, because that's the whole thing here, too. Like, oh, look at those kids going to that 7-Eleven. Obviously <laughs> up to no good. But see, now... They're going to buy Slurpees and gummy worms. Well, it's like, actually, I actually, um, when uh, when people were talking about, you know, the, the guys going going to the convenience store, I made a point. I mean, this was like right before I got out of that Facebook group, but I made a point of saying, well, I hope, I hope he doesn't buy iced tea and Skittles because I know, you know, I I know that I've got people in this, this neighborhood that are just waiting to shoot a teenager. Just give me a fucking reason, you know? And, And now, but now that the kids are not going physically to school anymore, 
because kids are kind of their school day isn't as regimented as it was before there's a lot more well there's a lot more people taking walks around the neighborhood because there's nothing to do you know oh god here too it's like constantly everybody's walking their dog and walking around and yeah and now that i'm home during the day and my office i have a window that faces the front i overlook the goddamn mailboxes i you know i see everybody from here so i see all this stuff but if i wanted to be that asshole i've got the best vantage point from this window oh yeah i know but you wouldn't do that never because I have, you know, I have legitimate things to be pissed off about. You know, I don't, I don't care about some teenager walking down the street. Why would I care? Oh my God, one day. Because you know I love, I, I love the gossipy stuff and, and it, it kills me that I don't know everything. One day there was a couple walking by. I'm going to guess they were maybe 19 or 20. And they were walking. I think they had gone to the convenience store and they were walking this way. Pitt was uh-huh. watching me point. So oh, yeah. they were coming this way across the front of my house, and I heard them before they even came around the corner because they were arguing. And oh, she fabulous. was angry, and she was not having it, whatever it was. And he uh, was uh, uh. he was a severely beaten down young man. He needed to just uh, do what the uh, fuck he was told because he knew what side his bread was buttered on. That's what I'm going to say. But she was very angry. And I just oh, stood fabulous. here, just stood a few feet back from the window so that they wouldn't see me, like, with my face pressed against the window, which yeah. I'm so tempted to do sometimes. And then they went, you know, past my tree and down that way, and I couldn't see them anymore, and I was sad. But I listened as long as I could. Oh, my God, I would have loved that. Because oh I love listening to fighting. I don't know why. I Oh, me too. I would have totally loved it. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, uh, breathe deeply, deeply, the year of woo. So, in this episode's woo, we are going to explore something that is near and dear to my heart. Lincoln Park. For longtime listeners and people that know me in real life, you know that I am a fanatical Linkin Park fan. And for people that don't know that, be aware that I'm a fanatical Linkin Park fan. And when Chester Bennington died, it was very, very devastating to me. Anyway, I've heard a lot of stuff over the years about how, oh, it wasn't really suicide, it was murder. You know, the same shit you heard about Kurt Cobain. And it's like, heaven forbid, a fucked up heroin addict should dry up a suicidal episode, right? <gasps> heaven forbid it was murder. No, it wasn't murder. Kurt Cobain committed suicide because he was a depressive junkie. And I suspect the same of Jester. Anyway, there are people that believe he is murdered. And here is a little bit of why. A friend of mine sent me this article because she is trying to convince me to go to the uh, conspiracy theory side of the world. And she wants me to believe in the deep state and that Trump is God and that all this stuff. But to convince me, she sent this article about Lincoln Park that basically said that some guy, I don't know who the fuck he is, John Podesta who was apparently Clinton's, I'm guessing Hillary Clinton, I don't know, maybe Bill Clinton, I don't know, chief of staff, who was exposed during the Pizzagate scandal as being this renowned pedophile that was part of the pedophile ring that has completely been proving to not exist. But that was actually Chester Bennington's father, according to this article. And Lincoln Park received grant money from them, from the Clinton Foundation in 2016. It doesn't say why, but apparently Lincoln Park received grant money. Um, Was it to set Chester up? I don't know. Maybe. Because this whole thing involves that because Chester was a victim of sexual abuse, which he was. He was molested by an uncle. Um, But apparently... It was deeper than that. And he was getting ready to go public with his with Chris Cornell, you know, his friend from Soundgarden who also committed suicide. 
um, they were getting ready to go public against the deep state secret pedophile ring. You know, the one that everybody in Hollywood is a part of and that they drink baby's blood. You know, the one. Yeah. They were about to go public and that's why they were both murdered, according to this article. And we need to watch their videos for hidden agendas. And did you know that the Lincoln Park logo really is the symbol of the international pedophile group? But it's broken, so Lincoln Park has only existed to bring pedophiles down and to bring the organization that made Pizzagate happen to bring them down. It's evident in their logo, even though it's not. I don't even know what else to say about this other than, yeah, yeah. It's not true. It's disgusting to talk about somebody's suicide in terms of a crazy conspiracy thing. But yeah, anyway, there you go. Lincoln Park only existed to bring down pedophiles. I hate to say this about my favorite band, but they were just a rock band. Not just a rock band, but yeah, they were just a rock band. So we're, we're, we are recording on a Saturday. Uh-huh. So last night was Friday, even though I guess like the weekends really don't mean anything with the pandemic, but they kind of still do, right? Right. right. But anyway, I got off work last night at seven. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, daylight till nine. Right. And so I was walking the dog all, you know, there was so much like smells of barbecue through the neighborhood and blah, 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 blah. You know, and I love my neighborhood. You walk through it, and there's, like, you know those signs, those signs that are popular now that say, you know, in this house we believe that love is love, love and Black them. Lives Matter and feminism is for everybody and blah, right. blah, 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 blah. Those signs are all over my fucking neighborhood, so which cool. makes me so happy. So cool. Which is so funny. I just have to interject because when you were growing up in that exact neighborhood, oh, fuck no. No way oh, yeah. was that neighborhood filled oh, no. with accepting people. <laughs> oh, no. It's a different world. But it was so fun, like, walking. You could, you know, smell the barbecue, and then there was, like, there were some people by the school yeah. barbecuing in their front yard, blasting rock music. Oh, my God. Then a little bit later, there was people barbecuing, blasting Tejano music. Awesome. And then you'd go by and just hear random boom, boom music from other yards that you don't know what it is. But my favorite was there was obviously a live band playing in the backyard of a house where you could smell barbecue. And it was like obviously like hand drums, a guitar and a violin. And they were playing gypsy music. And it was like, oh, my God, these people have to be Rennies. They have to be. Oh, totally. (gasps) <gasps> they're either pagans or rennies or both. Probably both. Oh my God. So now I'm going to make sure to walk the dog by that house. So you've, because you I figured out meet which those house people. it was. You figured out. Okay. Yeah. And it's on the corner. Yeah. Oh I want to meet those people. That's so cool. I, I remember one day you texted me that you were walking the dog and somebody in a house somewhere was blasting kiss alive one. Yes. Did you ever figure out what house that was? Yes, yes, oh, yes. And I, in fact, and I saw the guy, and he's hot. Really? Really bushy beard and shaved head, oh, and hello, totally hot. But he's also married. But whatever. But maybe we could be friends because he's only like four houses down from me. That's so exciting! Oh my god! You know, but yeah. So I, yeah, I really like my neighborhood because yeah. <laughs> but the gypsy music, I'm so intrigued by that. Yeah. Because obviously that's the right kind of people. Right. Now, since you're not in a subdivision, though, I'm going to guess that your neighborhood doesn't have, like, the nonsense of the birthday parade. That kind of shit. I'm guessing. No. No. I th- it, it seems like a no. very subdivision-y thing. Like, I can't imagine anything like that. Because my whole life growing up, I never lived in a subdivision until we moved to Texas. Yeah, no, and, that, and I feel, I've learned, like, when I was living, you know, with Darren, 
right? You know, there's the community pool and blah, blah, blah. And all the neighbors tend to know each other and yada, yada, which is cool, right? I think that's cool. But I could see that happening there. Sure. Because everybody knows each yeah. other. And like where Pete and Leah live, everybody knows each other right. in that subdivision. Well, like we're... When we moved to Texas, when we first moved in, all the houses on this one stretch of the block were all being built around the same time. So as over the course, over the span of like six months, like one family at a time, we all met everybody. And a lot of them had been ex-military families, so it was kind of like, oh my god, we're putting down roots here, we should know our neighbors for the first fucking time ever. Yeah. And so there was a lot of effort to organize, like, 4th of July barbecues, like someone's backyard would be, you know, slated for the 4th of July. We'd do Christmas caroling. That's where we started doing the luminarias at Christmas and everybody put them I like that. Oh, I love doing the luminarias at your parents. But, like... I did that every year for years. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's so fucking much fun. But what's weird is that, you know, there's hardly anyone left. The only other people that stayed up until very recently was um, this house that's like four or five houses down. And the, the original people had been there the whole time and they only just like last year sold their house. And the reason why I know that is because their house listing went viral. Because oh. the inside of their house was the most insane and you know how I love crazy house listings yeah you know how well I, I mean I'm a, I'm a big fan of oh my god you couldn't make the fucking bed before you took the pictures to try to sell your house you know what you expect to see a to- an unflushed toilet or something you know because the pictures are so bad this house though every surface was a pattern it was like Ooh. it was like a baroque nightmare. It was like every every and, and they even in their house listing they even had they even said things like the furniture is negotiable. Like if if you want this house as is, like like anyone's gonna buy that house and not fucking rip down all the wallpaper and paint everything. And oh my god. I mean imagine a kitchen where ev- even every cabinet door has got like flowers painted on it. Every surface, oh, like no. here's an island. Yeah. Every side of the island has sp- small panels and each one is its own individual piece of art. Uh, oh my god. And it and so it went totally totally viral because it was I mean every fucking room except for the quote man cave which was basically like like a an outbuilding in the backyard that uh, clearly the husband who lived there what, And was it like just like this techie paradise with the big TV it was and a TV, badass sound it was, and It was a, like a TV and a recliner and get the fuck out of that house because obviously Oh, so it wasn't fabulous I then. mean, it would hurt your eyes to be in this house. It was so, like, there is no rest <laughs> for the eyes. There's everywhere you look, there's just shit everywhere. Yeah. And then there was the additional feature of that house which was how I instantly knew exactly what house it was when I saw the street. Small historical family cemetery in the front yard. Because there's a tree. Wow. There's a tree near their drive near the end of their driveway that has a, a low rock wall around it and there were four graves from the 1800s. But the owners, the original owners of the house, the reason why I hated them and those people didn't really participate. And it's a good thing, too, because I instantly hated them when I found out that they did this. They thought, well, someone's going to come steal those headstones. Oh, the headstones that have been there since the 1800s and no one's touched them? Right. And since they... That's fabulous, though. Oh, my God. But since they own the land now, oh, I guess these belong to us. So they took the headstones and put them in the garage to keep them safe. Okay, you just desecrated four graves. Oh my god, but how cool would it be to have four headstones and actual graves in your yard? I would love that. It's like, that. there's only, there's a couple, there's another house closer to the high school down there, where I went to high school, that had a similar set, setup. That was someone's family's plot, you know. 
where where they you know they farmed or whatever and this was where they buried their dead and it, i mean it was really cool and i loved having that down the street but it always infuriated me that they took the headstones because you know that they didn't do it carefully that they didn't like photograph and mark things so that they know which headstone went exactly where you know they didn't yeah. care enough to do that or to you know want to contact a local historical society or anything they didn't fucking deserve to have that and it really made oh, me God, mad yeah. so i really didn't want to get to know those people so when i saw the inside of their house it was like oh my god they're fucking crazier than i thought it, it's a you know a decent little subdivision but those you know you will occasionally get some seriously cray people yeah, but oh my god, I want to have an ancient cemetery on my land. How fabulous. Oh, it's just like, I would love but to I would the honor character. it, and it'd be cool, and I would, like, I would buy, like, the rustiest, creepiest-looking little fence to put around it. Well, because it had a rock wall, the rock wall is still there. So the graves are within the wall. Uh, it's, like, maybe foot and a half, two foot high, stacked stone wall. You know, high enough that you could only barely see, like, the tops of some of the headstones. Like, some of the headstones yeah. were really small, if I remember. But, I mean, they were there when we all moved in, and then those assholes decided... I, I mean, the balls on some people. Ugh. are bombing all over the country. They are posing as movies you already know. They may be in your theaters, your neighbor's home, or even your own. Why are you doing that voice? I don't know. <laughs> I thought it made me sound cool. It doesn't. I'm Jason Bishop, host of the Invasion of the Remake podcast with co-hosts Sam Stepanenko and Trish Coughlin. Join us each week as we rotate talking about your favorite films and their not-so-favorite remakes. We'll also dig deep to find forgotten films that we think are more worthy of remaking, complete with our own fantasy casting. You can get all 130 episodes and counting on... Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play Music, TuneIn Radio, Player FM, and all the best podcast providers, even... Frickin' YouTube. For the low, low price of absolutely nothing, join the invasion. Subscribe today. Or we'll blow up your planet. I was just thinking about, remember when we lived on the, in the duplex and Kiko died? Yeah. And I buried him, and I made that little grave marker in the backyard. Yep. I wonder if it's still there. Oh, I, I doubt it. Yeah. God, that day. Thank thank God my husband was home. Because he went out and dug I the I remember, yeah, because I went knocking on your door. And I wasn't home yet. And he answered hysterical with Kiko's, like, dead, bloated body in my arms. Oh, my God. Oh. And I remember your husband was like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> And it, that was, there was two different times where I was out doing something and something made me not go straight home. And that was one of those times. Both of them were dog related. The other one was when the neighbor's dog, the people who built that deck in that tiny yard behind us that had no business uh -huh. having a deck. Oh, when the dog hung itself. When the dog jumped over the fence and hung itself. Oh my God. Yes. Still, I, I'm so glad that I didn't see it. But the guy came and oh, knocked God. on the door. And my husband went out to, because he was like, uh, my dog is on your side of the, you know, cause he didn't know. And they had to go out yeah. through, our, through our house to get to the backyard to lift their dead dog. Oh, that's so awful. And that was another day that it was like, I'm actually, I'm actually surprised that he even told me what happened. That's awful. Because yeah. I, did you, I, you saw Kiko's corpse of though, right? I did. Yeah. yeah, because, yeah, yeah. because you had him. I think I brought you, like, a lid of a copier paper box. Yeah, or we put so, him in a box, so could, and then we were waiting for Benny to get there before we buried yeah, him. Yeah, we wanted to wait. And I remember he, um, I remember petting him and thinking, because he, it's not like he was really bloody or anything. You know, it's like he... No, but he was bloated, he remember? Because bloated. he got, he got, like, full-on run over. He had tire mics on his body, remember? Yeah. 
because he was like, yeah, it was like, it was horrible. Yeah. But he died instantly, so oh, yeah. that's good. And like, and I remember, like you said at the time, he he died doing what he loved, being really naughty. Yeah, yeah. And it was only the night before that that I was over at your house and a bunch of other people were over and we put those little gold lame booties on him. And oh, I remember. Oh, was that the night before? It was the Aww. night before because the la- that was the last time I saw him, and and it was so Aww. funny that I was I fell against the wall with my face against the wall. I was literally peeing my pants. I remember. So yeah. Hard. Oh my God, he was so outraged. Because you know, yeah. and I I still you know I have I have little little high top tennis shoes for Spike, and I've I've never put them on him, but one day I will. And he will be so furious with me. We have at work, we have metallic baby blue frozen two dog slippers. Boxer <laughs> totally needs them. Has he ever worn shoes? No. And actually, you know what? He'd probably be a good sport about it. I'm sure he'd just be yeah. like, whatever. <laughs> See, and Kiko didn't mind wearing clothes. Like, Kiko, like, I remember I bought that little tiny baby sundress from the thrift store. Yeah. With little spaghetti straps for his shoulders. He looks so cute in that because he was such a little ballerina. But, oh, And remember, Lindbergh awesome. could wear a girl's dress size 4T. <laughs> and he could wear your your Kiss t-shirt sometimes. I don't know how you, yeah. I don't know how you got a human t-shirt on a dog. I don't know how you did I that. used to put my Kiss t-shirts on him, yep, because I'd wear a Kiss t-shirt and I'd put him in a Kiss t-shirt when we'd walk. Uh-huh. The neighbors love that. And then when I dyed my hair blue, I would dye the top of his hair blue so we matched when we walked, you know? (laughs) Because that's... I loved that dog. He was a good sport. (laughs) I loved that dog. Oh, he was a good boy. Very, very good boy. He was the goodest of boys. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was kind of awful, but... He, so was I. <laughs> you know, I've always, I've always said that just, you know, a dog being, quote, untrainable or whatever, that doesn't mean they're stupid. That doesn't mean they're bad. It just means that you have an agenda that is not their agenda and they don't really care what you want sometimes. Oh, yeah. But no, he was a, he was a, he was a happy dog. He had a very, very good life. <laughs> Thanks for listening. If you enjoy our show, please take a moment to rate us and review us on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher. If you send us a screenshot of your review, we'll send you a Bitchin' Boutique sticker. Everyone Everyone loves loves stickers. stickers! Please subscribe or add us to your favorites wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribers get new episodes first and are also more attractive. Drop us a line anytime at pitneyandamelia at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. spend a whole afternoon googling different kinds of pocket pussy.